Hello, I'm Mercedes Stevenson, and this is the West Bloc Politics, Perspectives, and Players. The Canadian government is in the midst of budget consultations, and a group of mayors from the Metro Vancouver area are bringing their asks to Ottawa this week. The government's Investing in Public Transit Infrastructure Fund committed $3.4 billion in 2016 to be dished out over three years to projects across the country. In the following budget, an additional $23.5 billion was promised for the next decade of transit projects. Vancouver has benefited from that funding, and its transit ridership has increased by 20% in the last three years, unlike other major Canadian cities. Now they're looking further down the line. Joining me now is Vancouver Mayor Kennedy Stewart and Mayor of Langley, as well as the Mayor's Council on Regional Transit Vice Chair, Jack Froese. You're in Ottawa talking about transit, and this has been top of mind for this government in a lot of ways. They've talked a lot about the environment, the need for more public transit, there's all this money sitting in an infrastructure fund, but a lot of cities have really struggled to make transit translate into something that's useful for people as they grow it. And I think here, being in Ottawa, uh, we have the O-Train, as you know, there's been significant difficulties with getting it online. People have been very critical of it. That's not been Vancouver's experience, though. You're one of the rare cities that has really managed to grow your transit ridership. So can you tell me a little bit about your story and why you think Vancouver has been successful in areas that other cities just have not been? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, yeah. Well, um, you know, we're, we're a real success story. Uh, our ridership has grown by 20% over the last three years. Uh, and so we're spending the money that the provincial and federal governments, uh, we're spending as fast as we get it. And so where I think some of the other money is kind of clogged in other cities, uh, we need more. And uh, that's, that's really what we're here for, is to try to get uh, a permanent transit fund, but also some immediate investments to, uh, to help our expanding system expand even faster. That's what we yeah. want, uh, GHG re reductions, uh, you know, but also congestion, uh, re reducing congestion, and to keep the growth going. We want people out of their cars into transit. So what, what leads, Jack, to efficient transit spending? Because all these cities, theoretically, should be able to do what Vancouver's yeah. doing and spend the money and get it out the door. But if that's not the case, what's being done differently in British Columbia? You know, one thing we can be proud of in British Columbia is that we have 23 communities in the, mm -hmm. you know, the Mayor's Council for Regional Transportation, which is basically a, a part of TransLink. It's, it's part of the governing of transit. We're all united in what we want. So when you have a, a, a diverse, you know, diverse Metro Vancouver area with 23 communities that come together and say, this is what we need, and they're consistent with it over the last several yeah. years, that's huge. When you have other cities where a change in government changes the whole plans, uh, it, it causes some, uh, some disruption and making those plans, um, fulfilling those plans is more difficult. So I think that's a big part of it, is just that we're united in what we want. We have uh, worked very hard on our plans. We, know we have our, our designs are ready and projects are moving forward without stopping because there's an election. That's, I think that's a, a big part of our success. And I could also say it's a, a willing provincial government. So usually the, uh, the spending has been split 40% federal, 40% provincial, and then 20% regionally. And that makes a big difference where in some provinces we find there's no commitment to transit spending. Others, it, it moves from project to project. And so uh, for us, that's been yeah. a big key to our success is the three levels of government uh, working together on a single plan. Uh, yeah. And that's what we're back here for is we have a 10-year vision and we have a final phase we need funding for. And uh, the sooner we get it, the better. So, yeah. speaking of funding, I mean, tis the season that everyone yes. is in Ottawa <laughs> making their yeah. asks to the federal government yeah. as they prepare the federal budget, which we never know when exactly it's coming, but it's usually around end of March-ish. Mm -hmm. uh, so you want to make sure you get your ask in now. You're obviously here meeting with federal officials. What are you asking for exactly? Yeah, you know, uh, as Kennedy said, the 10-year the vision, and, and we have the 10-year vision, phase one, phase two is funded, phase three is not funded, and there's a gap there. We have to get that funded. That's one of the asks. What, what would phase yeah. fee three be for, for people outside of Vancouver? What does phase three accomplish in it, your system? It accomplishes uh, a gondola to SFU. There's a mountain. It's sitting on top of a mountain. Yeah. We're, we're running buses up and down that mountain. It's much more efficient. That's one of the one of the big projects. Rapid buses, uh, new lines for rapid buses throughout the region. And then uh, Surrey Langley Skytrain uh, development all the way to Langley. And the design uh, for the UBC extension. And Kennedy can talk about that. That's a, that's a big part of it. And, 
you know, people ask us about UBC, uh, why isn't it all in there? But we're working towards it, so I can't. Yeah, I mean, we've got the two big projects we're working on are extensions to our, our, our fantastic SkyTrain system, which if you've been on, you know it works very, very well. And, uh, and so we're, we're trying to get it extended to Langley, uh, through Surrey to Langley, and then out to the University of British Columbia, which is one of the busiest transit corridors, if not the busiest in, uh, in, in North America. And so uh, those are big projects that we know will need cabinet approval, so we're just here yeah. hammering away on those. Uh, but in the meantime, we're, we're on board with a electrification of buses. We know this is a priority for this government and so we want to not only help them implement a plan but we need more investment because our uh, our need is so great. So it's great if they're electric buses but we can't slow down the investment in increasing our ridership capacity. So basically you're saying to the federal government we're willing to do the electric buses route which certainly is something yeah. a lot yep. of different cities are looking at. I know some cities are yep. looking at like electric fire trucks yep. Uh, yep. going across the board but there's not enough funding as is right now to do that electrification and to expand the public transit system. That's right. That's yeah, right. Yeah, you've nailed it. Yeah. We, uh, we're waiting to see what the actual offer is from the federal government, but uh, you know we've already started electric buses now and we've, we're prototyping a whole bunch of things and we, because it's on the ground, we understand how they work, so we're, we're on, totally on board with electrifying a whole fleet by 2040, but we're going to need additional investment probably of Two hundred million dollars or something to get it there. Why twenty forty? That seems like it's a long way away. Yeah. It's, it's a federal target, right? So that's what they've. Yeah. We're trying to working from their targets. Yeah, and and you got to understand that uh, our fleet, our bus fleet, is a pretty extensive bus fleet. We're purchasing new conventional buses today, which have about a twenty-year lifespan. So it takes time to move them through the system, yep. and we want to get started on that as quickly as possible. But we can't just cancel every order. We we have to build it up slowly. You're asking for, as I understand it, one of the things is for federal funding to be basically permanently enshrined yeah. for mm -hmm. transit. Yeah. Um, I can maybe see why you're making that case, and you have a fairly strong case mm -hmm. out west saying, look, we've had a very successful system. Yeah. But if taxpayers look across the board and they see other cities where it hasn't been as successful, uh, why should that be something that is I mean, permanent? That's mm -hmm. very unusual in a budget. Is that sort of a, a very strong ask for all cities? It, it, it is. Uh, yeah. Through the uh, Federation of Municipalities, um, that was a big ask for all across the nation. Uh, it's not inconsistent with what the federal government has already been spending on transit uh, annually. It's just very difficult to build out these large projects. It doesn't matter what city you're from. If you have consistent, predictable funding, you can plan for the future and build these projects. And that's really where they're, you know, right across Canada, we're asking for that permanent funding. Yeah, we are in a minority uh, parliament, and so uh, the last time we got permanent funding uh, was uh, through budget negotiations, where other parties kind of pushed this, the NDP pushed the Liberals to have a permanent fund, you remember the gas tax. Uh, so this is what we're kind of hoping now, that, uh, that other parties will be more aggressive in their asks uh, for transit funding, and that we'll see a budget that will be one that people will talk about for for years to come. Uh, you're former NDP MP. Have yes. you been lobbying your colleagues on this? I was there this morning. This? I was there to caucus <laughs> this morning and, and pushing transit. And I know that this is part of the negotiations. Uh, we know uh, the bloc will also be very interested in this. Uh, we're waiting to see what the conservatives will talk about. They've talked a lot about infrastructure funding. We're hoping that it's in transit as well. Yeah. Do you have a sense that that's going to be a priority for this government in the coming budget? Uh, we hope yeah, it is. I, I mean, I so. we, we know that uh, we have talked with uh, Minister McKenna already, and we know that electrified buses are, are a big part of their agenda, but we're, there's other parts of the system we also need expanded, and so we're hoping we can help as much as we can to help them hit their targets on, uh, on the uh, electrification of the bus fleet, but we can also get some of our uh, things in there that we've built through our, ten through our planning, our vision, and our 10-year our commitment uh, that would keep our system expanding. And that's the big part. If we stop now, uh, people may return to their vehicles, their, their cars, and we want them to get, stay on transit. So, uh, and, and the best thing is we have a willing provincial government who has committed to funding 40% of this already. So we can get a SkyTrain to Langley for a $1.6 billion yeah. extension, but it really only costs the federal government about $300 million. So, yeah. so really, it's, it's a great deal. How close are you to, to having some of these projects? Because I know when you look at the qualifications to mm -hmm. qualify, especially under the infrastructure bank, you have to be shovel ready. Mm -hmm. Are they shovel ready? They're shovel ready. We are. Yeah, we, the design work is done. The business case is prepared. It, it'll go in front of the Treasury Board for the SkyTrain to Langley. Yep. So we're ready for that. We're ready to yep. go. It's, uh, it, funding is committed uh, halfway on that line, we need to get the funding to complete it and then carry on with the expansion. 
And uh, so, yeah, we're ready to go. Yeah, and uh, our gondola to SFU is shovel ready. The yeah. bus routes are shovel ready. Like, we're all ready to yeah. go. And, and then maybe we can, uh, you know, urge the other uh, large cities, uh, medium-sized cities, to kind of uh, work with their provinces to get to, to get the same thing. Because in the end, we're not going to hit our, our uh, Paris Accord targets if we don't invest in transit. And electrification is great, but there's other things we need to add as well. One last question for you both. Okay. Uh, the infrastructure bank, which we've been talking about, big promise by the Liberals, a lot of money mm -hmm. in that bank, billions. Yep. Not a lot has flowed. Yep. Have you been satisfied with this government's performance in terms of support for infrastructure projects? You start with that, and I, you know, yeah, I, I, I've been satisfied. I mean, we had uh, we had three phases to our ten-year plan. Uh, phase one and phase two are fully funded. Uh, now we're waiting for the phase three funding. So uh, we have spent all the money they gave us. Yeah. Uh, unlike other regions where it's it's uh, they're still sitting on on possible investments, we've spent it all. So we uh, we'll take theirs. That's Toronto, right. Montreal, right. want to give us their money? We'll take it and we'll build transit. And uh, yeah, yeah, and I, I think it's uh, you know for the taxpayers to see money that's sitting in a sitting in a pile not being used. Uh, they don't want to see that. This money should be in the economy, driving the economy, jobs, uh, building these projects. We're ready to go. Some other cities uh, aren't. And uh, rather than put the money to a city that's maybe seven years or ten years out, let's put it to a, you know, where we're shovel ready, ready to go. I think that's a better use of the money. Uh, it's, it, it provides uh, economic uh, driver, it, but it's also reaching our goals as we yeah. discussed earlier. So Tens of thousands we're, of jobs, yeah. we're all ready to go. Yeah. Well, yeah. let's see what uh, Mayor Jim Watson has to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> thank you both very much for well, joining you. us on thank your trip you. to Ottawa. Thank you very much. That's all the time we have for today. Thanks for joining us. For the West Block, I'm Mercedes Stevenson.